Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna and today we'll begin topic of the pericardium. Now what is the pericardium? It is a covering of the heart. So if this is the heart lying in your body there is you can say like a coat over the heart which keeps the heart in a covering which is known as the pericardium. So it is fibrocerous sac that encloses the heart and roots of the great vessel. Pericardium has two parts, the fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium, while the serous pericardium is further divided into the parietal and visceral layer. Let's talk about the fibrous pericardium first. So you can say that the fibrous pericardium is basically a conical sac made up of fibrous tissue and it has the parietal layer of the serous pericardium attached to its deep surface. So this is the layman drawing of the heart, obviously. But for better understanding, I'm going to draw it like this. Uh, basically, the fibrous pericardium is the outer covering of the heart. And it is necessary to know that the serous pericardium's parietal layer is attached to its deep surface. The serous pericardium itself is formed by two layers, the parietal and the visceral layer. The parietal layer is attached to the deep surface of the fibrous pericardium. On the other hand, the visceral layer is attached closely adherent to the viscera which is the heart so you can say the visceral layer is attached to the heart just like in the lungs a cavity is formed between the visceral and parietal layers of the serous pericardium of note is that it's not between the fibrous and serous layer it's rather between the two layers of the serous pericardium that the pericardial cavity is formed and a thin layer of lubricating fluid very thin layer of lubricating uh, fluid is kept here so that the heart can easily uh, contract without friction and if this layer is filled up with fluid like inflammatory fluid it is then known as the pericardial effusion that topic we'll touch later so i hope that the concept of fibrous and serous pericardium has been built up now let's talk more in depth about the fibrous pericardium how it is located in your body so for example this is the manubrium and this is the sternum and this is the diaphragm the fibrous pericardium is basically consisting of an apex and a base so you can say it is lying like this so this is the apex of the fibrous pericardium and this is the base of the fibrous pericardium the apex is at the sternal angle and the base is very closely attached to the central tendon of the diaphragm almost inseparable to it what is the function of the fibrous pericardium it is to prevent overfilling and over expansion of the heart so that the heart expands within this pericardial cavity only anterior to the fibrous pericardium are the weak ligaments known as the sternopericardial ligament as you know deep to the sternal body lie the fibrous pericardium hence the fibrous pericardium is extending its connection to the sternal body via the sternopericardial ligaments hence this comes in the anterior relation of the fibrous pericardium on each side of the fibrous pericardium is the mediastinal pleura and itself it is lying in the me middle mediastinum let's talk about the serous pericardium now this is uh, a double layer as i mentioned earlier the parietal layer attached to the fibrous pericardium and the visceral is attached closely to the heart the visceral layer that is attached closely to the heart is known as the epicardium so that was mostly your detail about the, the pericardium so fibrous pericardium and the serous pericardium are basically all surrounding the entire heart up to the root of the great vessels so you can say if these are the roots of the great vessels like the aorta the pulmonary trunk the pulmonary veins and the inferior and superior vena cava it is only surrounding the roots of these vessels rest of the vessels are outside of the pericardium so it is very important to know for example this is the heart and this is the root of the great vessel it is important to know visceral layer that is fused to the heart at the root of the great vessel it becomes continuous with the parietal layer so this is the parietal layer this is the visceral layer now let's talk about the sinuses of the pericardium what are sinuses firstly a sinus you can say is a space a pathway that is empty okay for this we'll have to touch the topic of embryology in an embryo when the heart is developing when none of the great vessels are formed nothing is formed since there are so many vessels god made it simpler he divided the entire vessels into two tubes and 
this is the arterial tube and this is the venous tube for example when these tubes are developing into the arteries and veins of the future the arterial tube will be enclosing the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk the venous tube is enclosing the superior inferior vena cava along with the pulmonary veins the passage between these two where the visceral and parietal pericardium are going to become continuous with each other they will leave a space this space is known as a sinus and between the arterial and venous tube that sinus is known as the transverse sinus similarly as the embryo is growing and the heart is growing there is another sinus that develops between the multiple veins since there are four pulmonary veins two in vena cavas hence there are multiple veins crowded together and when these grow apart they will develop a space between each other due to the reflections to form the oblique sinus or the oblique pericardial sinus so these two sinuses are very important the oblique sinus is basically going to be located beh behind the left atrium the clinical importance of the sinus is that a uh, during surgery a ligature can be passed to the aorta or pulmonary trunk by the surgeon through the sinus as they can reach the root of these arteries via the sinus the oblique sinus basically permits pulsations of the left atrium to occur freely so this was a little about the sinuses the nerve supply of the pericardium is simple just like we studied in the pleuras the parietal layer of the serous pericardium and the fibrous pericardium are going to be supplied by somatic nerves and somatic nerve supplying them is the phrenic nerve these two layers are pain sensitive the nerve supply of the visceral layer will be studied in the heart which is obviously going to be supplied by the autonomic nerves or the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves now let's quickly talk about important clinical whenever there is inflammatory fluid filling up in the pericardial cavity and pericardial cavity is the space between the parietal and the visceral serous pericardium then what happens is drainage is required and the location of carrying out this drainage is in the left fifth or sixth intercostal space just lateral to the sternum or along the left xiphicostal margin where the xiphoid process is going to be forming an angle with your costal margin of the left side so there are two places you can carry this out suppose this is the fifth intercostal space just lateral to the sternal margin here here is a point of uh, carrying out the pericardiocentesis or you can even do it at the zephy costal angle this is the zephyoid process this is the costal margin hence you can even carry it out over here the needle's position should be upwards backwards and towards the left so that was all about the pericardium i really hope you got the concept thank you so much for watching